В одном из ваших видео о руках. In one of your videos on runes, you said a very important sentence that stuck with me, quoting approximately, abusing the runic channel to solve personal needs is inadmissible. Could this topic be elaborated on in more detail? What is the right way to work on the runic channel for a runologist to be worthy of the gods of the Scandinavian pantheon? What is the most efficient way to work with runes without abusing the runic channels? Take, of course, the word abusing in quotation marks, with respect and gratitude. Yes, we very often speak in our lectures about certain ways of interaction with magical channels, magical forces, where certain types of behavior is inadmissible. And this certain kind of behavior is in fact defined by the word abusing or exploiting. Exploiting in what way? In a consumerist fashion. Why does it happen and why should it not be done? I want to tell you right away that by doing this you will not cause any big damage to the actual Norse pantheon or channel, but could greatly damage yourself. Let's look into this and talk about it. When a person comes to magic and starts practicing on a sorcery level, at least on a sorcery level, he usually comes to this in two of the following states. It's terribly scary, but I want this so badly. And the second state, so here I am. Why isn't everyone cheering? Start cheering immediately. It is such a great joy I finally decided to come, isn't it? I am finally here. Why isn't this appreciated? When we say that some practitioners try to abuse the channel, it is precisely the second state that is being implied. In what case do we usually start exploiting something without giving anything back, not understanding the conditions of interaction, when we are convinced that we are owed something? There is a certain personal inner attitude towards oneself, possibly connected to self-conceit, to a sense of self-importance, that would love to manifest itself through magical practices. The surrounding world doesn't appreciate me, says the person. And it is greatly in the wrong, as there is nothing and no one greater than me. And those who don't appreciate it are, of course, spiteful mudslingers, meaningless idiots, ignorant, heedless of the surrounding reality, and I will now prove this to all of you. And respectively begins proving it, because this type of person usually begins his practice of magic by using some damage formulas, glooms, deceptions, attraction of certain benefits, again, not understanding, not knowing magical laws, he's completely sure that these benefits simply have to pour down as if from the horn of plenty. As previously, he thought that it is not good to be involved in magic, and he kept up this so-called defense, Whereas now, he finally accepted the terms of the proposed game, and so everything has to work out. We are talking here not only of the runic channel, but any traditional magic channel. With such self-conceit people come to black magic, with such self-conceit people come to white magic. By the way, the latter is more frequent, because it after all somehow supports the purity of their soul, as they think, and therefore will help in punishing the non-appreciating and ignorant enemies. It is Ridiculous to suppose that such mighty forces and such ancient established channels would actually buy in and fall for this kind of primitive thinking. The runic channel will simply not accept you, no chance. Because of self-praise, many of our predecessors of the Norse kind and Norse tradition and they loved praising themselves, sometimes inappropriately, in many ways contributed to this channel being capped for some thousand years or so. 
тысячу лет этот канал был прикрыт. Просто. Simply because of wrongful behavior. Из-за неправильного поведения. Кому они нужны? Who do they harm? Themselves, first of all. Прежде всего. Firstly, their own self. But also contemporary, religious, until recently officially approved channels do not accept such attitudes. They just don't turn away from the fool's embrace. They accept him and possibly even start giving something. But at such a price that when payback time comes, that is when the full understanding of who is who comes. Runes in this respect are more honest because they give no preferences and promises. But nonetheless, people who come to runes sometimes come precisely in the above described state. It is offensive, probably not only to the channel, but also to all the people who try to find themselves on this channel. Once again, this is purely subjective. I will repeat myself, not for magic, not for the channel, it will not hurt them. Now, it won't hurt them for sure. More damage can't be done. But the actual person can get it pretty bad. I try to teach people right away that on the North Channel, the channel of the North tradition, this sort of interaction is inadmissible, and in magic in general, if we talk of magic and not of some primitive and quite simple day-to-day -day witchery, it is inadmissible. Fact is that such a worldview has of course been formed by a long-standing, century-old Christian tradition. Not because the Christian tradition is all so bad, but because the principle of victimhood lies in its very foundation. Therefore, if a person comes to magic, religion or occultism with a Christian worldview, it means that he is making a sacrifice. Why? Because in Christianity, one could come to this only having completely renounced everything. This is why in Christianity this is a priori considered to be a sacrifice. But for some reason, in people's minds, this metamorphosis has been applied to absolutely everything. Although one should just think a little that the Norse tradition is not affiliated with Christianity, and it exists based on completely other principles, on completely other paradigms. It is the channel of warrior-like honor and virtue and it has been closed exactly for the simple reason that this warrior-like honor has been trampled down by the carriers of such potentials themselves. First they allow themselves to lie, then they allow themselves to lie a second time, then they allow themselves double-dealing, to be simultaneously in Christianity and with their own gods. And all of this, little by little gathered and gathered and gathered, in the end turning into one single mark of a curse. A curse tied to lies, something that is completely inadmissible on the North Channel. Many people who practice North tradition today forget about it. Praising ancient gods, bearing gifts, offerings, sacrifices of some kind, still doesn't mean that the person finds himself in the tradition. Being in tradition happens when you understand the responsibility for the received knowledge, for the said words, the given promise. A person who comes to the Norse tradition and starts applying runes has to necessarily understand the consequences. That if he applies the runes wrongfully, this channel will be close to him. It is about individual responsibility, at least before your own self, before your own consciousness. Whereas before Norse tradition, well, to be once more convinced of the fact that people are not worthy of magic and closing off for another thousand years, in my opinion, this would not be exactly right. This is why we teach people who come to our school and to runes in general and try to spread this information as broadly as we can that there are certain rules that exist here. Don't lie. Don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to the gods. If you need something from this world, 
and you have decided to use the mastery of witchcraft, like doing a runic spell or a runic amulet that will attract certain resources, think about the fact that you will be giving something in return. Each lesson that we dedicate to this topic, the topic of receiving something from this world, we always very widely develop the topic of the return gift that in the ancient pagan and more precisely the Norse and the Celtic tradition was called a geese, a commitment to do something. And as long as you do this as an obligation, as a return gift to the world, then consider the terms of the agreement meant, whereas abusing means giving nothing in return. Abusing means using and giving nothing back, and maybe even being irritated as to why do I owe me, I'm so great, let's cheer for me. What I began with, now we are coming back to it. We always have to remember what our responsibility is. We always have to keep our responsibility in mind. This is what we call abusing. How to establish a correct interaction with the North Channel through an agreement. I need this here and now and I'm committed to doing this here in return. Either you make such a commitment yourself or you wait for information from the channel, from the source of the force that will say, good, but in return you will do this and this and this for this long or lifelong depending on the resource needed. A mutually right exchange. When nobody owes nothing to anyone. A clear and open agreement. This would be called not abusing. As the one who behaves that way in relation to forces, abusing them, better be ready although he never is, to sooner or later find himself abused. And no need to get offended. No need to be offended.